According to many, synthetic gasoline is stillborn and can't become mainstream just because its production requires and wastes so much energy that it makes it commercially non-viable and nonsensical compared to electric cars. Not so fast, however. This may have been true until now. Synthetic fuel may not have made sense before, but everything changes. And in this day and age, it just might. First off, electric cars, as you're probably aware of, are far from being pollution free. True, they do not emit CO2 while they drive, but they do when they charge. If the energy source emits CO2, like a coal-fired power plant, which still power the majority of the world. Also, there's massive indignation from the public about the way lithium, cobalt, copper, and other minerals are extracted from the soil. Child labor in Congo, gigantic environmental destructions in China, massive need for water in the middle of the Atacama Desert in Chile to extract lithium, and so on. China is already destroying the environment at a large scale by extracting minerals, and despite the already alarmingly fast pace, it can't even keep up. Tesla is losing billions because it can't even honor all of its orders because there's a massive shortage of pretty much everything, especially minerals needed in large quantities for batteries. Straight out banning petrol cars and forcing everyone to buy an electric car will artificially create an explosion of the demand of those materials and metals. We'll even get more child labor even more gigantic environmental destruction, and even greater need for water in the desert, production will never be able to follow and prices will skyrocket. Tesla has already started greatly increasing its prices in 2021 and again in 2022. This is where synthetic fuel becomes interesting. Yes, it costs a lot to make because it requires a lot of energy, but we do have more and more green energy nowadays. So every passing day, this becomes less and less of a problem. Some countries like Norway and Iceland even have too much of it. Other countries like Hungary, for example, have an unexploited geothermal energy potential. If you can avoid simply and mercilessly putting a bullet in the head of one of the most active and developed industries, petrol cars, instead of forcibly replacing it with yet another industry that cannot keep up with demand today, but isn't even mature yet and not really cleaner. Besides all of that, there are still a few cases where we just don't know how we're going to get rid of hydrocarbon fuels. We don't know how to make electric airplanes or helicopters. There are a few prototypes and experiments, but they're nowhere near providing the range required. Batteries are way too heavy for them. They really need something way more energy dense, like a liquid fuel. Electric boats could be a thing because weight isn't really a problem on a boat, but an electric supertanker would require hundreds, if not thousands of tons of batteries. With gas prices well above two euros per liter at the time of making this video, and with no sign of decline in the near future, e-fuel becomes less and less of an outsider and more and more of a credible alternative. On the top of the combustion engine technology being well mastered and benefiting from over a century of research and development, all the infrastructure like the gas stations and distribution network is already in place. The infrastructure for electric cars on the other hand is still mainly to be developed with enormous needs for copper in order to make electric cables. Many people can't charge an electric car at home, they just don't have a garage or a parking space with electricity. E-fuel can allow petrol cars to be used for a longer time, giving more time for the transition to electric cars to happen. It could even eventually coexist naturally with electric cars. As a side note, since green synthetic fuel is environmentally friendly, the absurd CO2 taxes that currently hit petrol cars won't be relevant any longer. On the contrary, governments should encourage and subsidize its use just like they do with electric cars. If the electric car industry can't keep up with demand, and again it already doesn't, if we can't destroy the environment fast enough to extract those millions of tons of lithium, cobalt and copper, then what? We'll run out of cars? We won't be able to drive any longer? All the while there will be hundreds of millions of perfectly functional combustion engine cars that won't be allowed to be used by law. Why not feed those cars with synthetic fuel? Yes, it is still expensive to produce, but we really don't have a choice. Production cost will drop as technology improves, and as green fuel, it's the duty of all the world's governments to subsidize it and, if necessary, take part of the cost of them. In a much farther future, when fusion energy is finally cracked and we have unlimited clean power, then who cares? We'll all be able to freely choose between an electric car or e-fuel, discarding the original energy need because energy will be pretty much free anyway. So just to conclude things, despite its high energy production cost due to the high amount of energy required in its making, synthetic fuel makes more and more sense in today's economy, with very high oil barrel cost on one side and the rise of green energy production on the other. 
banning ground oil instead of petrol engine cars altogether would save an entire industry, allow a smoother transition to electric and offer a viable alternative to the all electric and probably create new jobs instead of destroying millions of them. There is therefore no valid reason to completely ban petrol engine cars, knowing that we know very well how to synthesize clean fuel for them. Thank you for your attention. I hope you like this essay and it's stimulated some thoughts for you. Now, in this video, the comments are open. Please feel free to share your thoughts and discuss things below. Thank you very much. Take care and here's to a greener future.